I remember the first time hearing voicemails and hearing someone say, hi, you reached Michael's voicemail, I'm not um, bringing my message. I think the very first one I heard, I said, oh man, like there's, this is horrible. There's gotta be a business in coaching people on how to leave an excellent outgoing voice message. And I said, well, I don't know if I'm interested in establishing that business. What I am interested in doing is distinguishing myself. That if my brand is that I make you pop and make you unique in the universe, then I have to pop and I have to be unique in the universe. So hearing those mundane outgoing voicemails put my motivation through the roof to deliver something different. Well, I think the first time I might've just said, hi, you reached Michael on this date. And that was pretty interesting because I changed it every day. But I, very early on, I maybe only did two or, or three of those. I said, wait a minute, I gotta say something different every day. And then once I started doing it, people, a common present for me is people buy me this day in history books or journals. And so I have become a collector of all that sort of thing. And then I read, I go to websites and, and then I have a sports one. I have one, my financial planner gave me one this date in baseball history. So I have all that. And so I consume these and this is how this whole thing developed, wanting to be unique, wanting to be interesting. Sometimes people ask me, what do you do when you're not in the mood to do one? I'm always in the mood to do one. You know, do people ask you, what do you do when you're not in the mood to brush your teeth? What do you do when you're not in the mood to put on your clothes before you go outside your house? Just do it. And so it has become an automatic muscle and a joyous one at that. Um, the same way I enjoy a soy latte with toffee nut and caramel syrup, I enjoy leaving that outgoing message. It's fun. It's entertaining for me. I enjoy it myself. Then when people respond, that's the best gift of all. So you listen to your voicemails. I rarely listen to my voicemails where someone said, hi, there's a bad guy, I'm doing that. It's like, no, please call me back. I usually get, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that one. Uh, hello, oh, you got me. Embarrassment, joy, quickness. It's amazing how many people are quick to give a good retort or response. And then what's fun is that some people do ignore it. Hi, this is Michael Alasso, and I'm calling. It's just fun. You learn something about someone who would get that on their, as they listen and that they could just leave a mundane voice message. You learn a little bit about someone. It's just like when I sing to a group after I've been introduced and some people sit there like this and some people applaud and some people sing along with me. The world is different and what, this, what these voicemails do is they give people an opportunity to be different, to respond differently. All I know is I never want anyone to call me and say, oh, I get a consistent message from Michael. I want to shatter expectations every day. That's my brand. That's what I want people to do. I have to do it. I'm a lot of bad things, but I'm not a hypocrite. And if you call first thing in the morning, you're gonna see who I am. You're gonna see who I am right away, even before you met me. I'm an entertainer. And so people sometimes have trouble with that synergy between what does entertainment have to do with business, business workshops, keynotes, and coaching. Call my voicemail and you'll see the synergy. The number one adjective that people are telling me they are right now is tired. I'm tired. You listen to my voicemail? You won't be tired. I don't want you tired. I want to energize. And that's what an entertainer does. So every keynote, every workshop I do, there's going to be an entertainment factor. The voicemail needs to have the same quality. 